Now this video is on how celebrities are used to launder dirty money by corrupt officials, underworld figures or shady club promoters. But first, let's look at the lottery scam on how celebrities were used to steal money meant for charities and poor communities by members of the National Lottery Council. You see, the lottery is a 24-7 money-making machine. Now after the winners have claimed their lottery winnings, the money that's left is kept in the lotto's charity purse. Then that money is used to fund or sponsor social programs via NGOs and NPOs. But what happened was, the lotto board convinced the government that the best way to distribute the funds is by letting them choose the right organizations and giving them the money without the red tapes that usually takes a long process. Now these guys, they used their crony friends and celebrities to launder the lotto's money disguised as sponsorship programs for poor communities. So this is how it worked. A celebrity would be identified, then money would be given to their foundation. But this money is then laundered through these foundations and then paid back to the people who are in charge of the lotto's purse. Now the celebrities get their cut in the process and it usually amounts to millions. Now once the money is paid back into the lotto board members private accounts or trusts, then they can spend it as they wish. It's rumored that council members bought 6 million rents, Rolls Royces, mansions and golf estates with millions and more. Now politicians were paid millions to keep the lotto board members protected and in return the members took care of everybody. You see, while the state companies needed millions in bailouts, the ministers and their cronies were milking it, I'm telling you. Now, the number of high-profile names implicated in lotto corruption continues to grow. Kwaito star and music producer Arthur Mafakate has now become embroiled in alleged lotto fraud and the SIU has frozen a property linked to him. It comes after it emerged that Terry Petto, who was the lead actress in the Oscar-winning film Tsotsi and another Tsotsi star, Presley Twenty Agaya, were being investigated for allegedly misappropriating funds distributed by by the National Lotteries Commission. They took money. Some of it was also shared with senior officials from the Lotteries Commission who splurged on luxury properties. Ground up investigative journalist Raymond Joseph revealed transgressions for years and reported on projects that were not concluded. You see, for years, the lottery avoided, dismissed and even suppressed recommendations by at least three reports, urging it to take action against theft and money laundering at the National Lottery Commission that amounted to 1.4 billion rands. You see, the corruption which took place over a period of more than five years. You see, that's because there was a well-oiled syndicate of colluding former board members, officials and non-profit organizations who were colluding and stealing money for self-enrichment. You see, proactive funding was introduced in an amendment to the Lotteries Act that was presented in 2015. You see, this allowed the Minister of Trade and Industry, who has oversight of the lottery in consultation with the National Lottery Commission Board, to fund projects without requiring any application. Now, the report identified top National Lottery Commission executives from former Commissioner Tabang Mambane and Philemon Leduaba, and also two former board members, the then chairperson Alfred Nevutanda and William Homa, who were responsible for the National Lottery Commission's proactive funding policy. Now let's look at some of the celebrities allegedly involved in these scams. Now, Special Investigations Unit said actress Muite Repeto from Tsuti was among those implicated who have been prohibited from selling, disposing, leasing, transferring, donating or dealing in any manner whatsoever with respect to the movable and immovable properties. Now, these properties are luxurious residential estates in Pretoria, Centurion, Artepies Port and Johannesburg and also included is a BMW 420i convertible and two ocean basket franchises worth 25 million rands. I mean, people are really balling on some scamming hustle, eh? Must be nice. 
Now the SIU has obtained a preservation order also to freeze a plot, a farm and three luxury properties valued at 53 million rands one of which belongs to musician Atam. You see, Atam of Ugade is alleged to have been entangled in the misappropriation of 56 million rands in community development funds from the National Lotteries Commission. This thing is like a spider web. A lot of people are caught up in this and some names we don't even know of. Also, City Press reported in December 2020 that a prominent businesswoman, Carol Bowers Company, Vanilla, a non-profit organization received more than 7 million from the Lotteries Commission. This is before the publication revealed on 20th of November that the former generation's actress is being investigated by the Hawks for her alleged involvement in fraud relating to a 40 million rands tender that she was awarded in 2013. So in the case of Kerry Petro, I've literally just published a story so, in fact, what happened is back in 2017, uh, an, an NPO called Zipsy Mode was given 20.2 20 20 million rand for initiation project. To this day, I don't know what it entailed because what happened is I'd um, put in a PIA request um, and I was refused because the NLC told me they had to protect the privacy of their donors and they couldn't say, they would refuse to say anything about it. Soon after that money went in, three million rand went to a developer who built Terry Petto's home. Um, I, I must tell you that Terry Petto's sister also got um, five million rand for, for an NPO which was bought off the shelf, brand new MPO within three weeks. Um, it got, uh, I speak under corrections, I think like three and a half million rand, and then um, two months later, another one and a half. Anyway, the total was five million rand. There is no way that that shelf organization could have produced the two years of financial statements that was required by the lottery. See, these guys also used lawyers to stifle money out by paying them exorbitant amount for simple services. But the lawyer will kick back the bulk of the money to the council members. You see, they didn't only use celebrities, they also used radio shows to sponsor them and also other avenues to embezzle the money out of the lotteries purse. Now, ministers were also bought houses directly and indirectly through the lotto's fund. In the case of um, Ar um, Arthur Mafakaite, what happened is it was a 9.3 million rand grant which was paid in two tranches. Um, the first tranche, I'm not sure how much was used, but nothing happened. But when the next tranche came through, the vast majority of that money was transferred into one of Arthur Mafakaite's from an, N from an NPO into one of these private companies. From there, it moved into a bond account. It moved to another account and eventually, um, it looks like a million of that money actually went as a deposit on the guest house. What happened to the other money that went in these accounts, I don't know. But, you know, people are saying, well, we're innocent. I can tell you right now that the SIU um, has really followed the money as I've, I've followed the money when I've been able to get hold of bank accounts. Now, the underworld dealings with musicians, DJs, promoters, you see, people who are involved in the entertainment industry, especially the nightlife entertainment scene. You see, what happens is, just like the Lotto scam, some of these artists and promoters are used to launder money. Now, the difference with the underworld is that money might be from selling illicit substances, it might be from blood money, from dirty jobs, but the money needs to be cleaned. Now, because of greed and wanting to be seen on Instagram living a life of opulence, some people make these deals with these shady characters in the dark. You see, a promoter or artist will be given money to do a show. Whether the show is successful or not, they don't care. But after the show, the promoter or the artist will be given truckloads of cash to bank as the proceeds of the show. Now that money is paid back to the kingpins and then they keep a small percentage of that cleaned money. But the problem with these underworld dealings is that there's always an element of extortion, intimidation, or even blackmailing involved. It's the nature of a spider. It always sets a trap. 
You see, outside of just dealing with dangerous figures, there's also the law that will tie you in into a criminal conspiracy or a plain fraud case if they don't get to you first. You see, sometimes they might even open a club in your name because you're the famous person with a clean record. Now, what happens is when the money laundering business turns into a cash cow, now they want to change the arrangements of the deal because now the side little business became a real legit business. But now the artists or the DJs, they feel like the reason why this whole thing is profitable is because of me, my likeness and the popularity that they might have and they deserve all the profits. But remember, you are dealing with sharks in this situation, predators. I spoke about this uh. in 2020, late 2020, and it was a premonition uh. from my side, saying that I hope these artists who are posing as so successful, having mentions, having you're posing in front of big cars, I hope they're making that money from the music. We have and we have what we called a lifestyle for feature unit. I wish that intelligence could be applied because you would find, this was my premonition, that you would find that some have fallen into the pit of being used by guys from the dirty world to clean dirty money. Mm. You know, I would say, for instance, let me make an example. Somebody would approach me and say, look, um, I want to support your, your event yeah. with this much, five million. Whether the event becomes a success or not, it, it's not it's not an issue. After the event, he has ten million going bank it for me as proceeds from the event. Mm -hmm. Let's okay. let's just be clear, uh, Eugene. Yeah. You are you talking? You're not talking about what what happened to uh, Kenan Forbes, isn't no, it? No, no, not not. Let's like be clear. I'm that saying, investigation is still going on. Yeah. I'm saying this was my premonition. Mm. If you understand what the term premonition means. Mm -hmm. I saw this coming long time, long before it started. And mm. when it started, it, then I could start saying, is this what I was saying? Because it is, there's a pattern. It's a DJ who becomes successful. Mm. Suddenly he owns a club. And then after that, he's gone down. Mm. City Light. It was the same situation. DJ City Light. Uh, DJ somebody, you know. Uh, with AKA, I, I don't know what's happening with that because all over the social media, people are speculating. Yeah. Do you guys remember the company Mabala Noise? They were signing all the artists in the country, even those who were not talented. I mean, the whole thing didn't make sense. They even signed Kanyemba. I mean, really now? People were accusing these guys of using corruption proceeds to fund the operation. You see, that was cleaning dirty money. As soon as you introduce dirty money into a legit operation, automatically that's money laundering and that's a crime. The Mabala Noise guys were accused of that and eventually all the accusation and the bad business that they were doing, the record company eventually closed down. But I think they're still managing Nasty C. You know, we've seen and heard responses from people like your Terry Peto, Atama Fukate, you know, when they say they didn't do anything wrong. And really, some of these people didn't understand the scheme that they were being reeled into. They saw dollar signs and trips to Dubai. <laughs> now they are shocked when the cops come knocking. You see, in the underworld, the results of a deal going wrong might cost someone a life easy. I mean, we've seen lately the rise of assassinations of people in the music industry and all kinds of rumors being spread on what happened. But money laundering is real and it's happening. And people in the entertainment industry are being used as pawns while the real players are in the shadows.